Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to call to order the meeting today. This is the meeting of the Health, Environment, and Community Engagement Committee. I'm uh, Cam Gordon. I'm chair of the committee. Today I'm joined by Council Member Andrew Johnson, co-chair, Jacob Fry, Lisa Bender, Elizabeth Glidden, and Alondra Cano. I'm glad to see everybody here. We have, I think, a, a great meeting uh, planned, lots of important topics to discuss. Um, we have two consent items, and then we have four discussion items. I'm going to um, move the last discussion item first. I think it's probably one of our shortest, and I understand that the presenter has to leave early. That's the Senior Skyway Center update. I'm going to move to item number um, 2.5, and I think I can just do that as chair of the committee, and there's no objections from anybody. Um, and then I'll, but before we get to that, I'll read, to the two, I'll read through the two consent items, and anybody can pull that off for discussion either one of those. Um, the first one is approving the appointment of Raymond Boyle to the Public Health Advisory Committee. That's seat one for a two-year term beginning January 1st, 2017 and ending December 31st, 2018. The second item is accepting a grant from the Minnesota Department of Human Services for tobacco compliance. That's in the amount of $4,800 and that will support our efforts to conduct educational tobacco compliance checks with, with realtors. So with those two items before, seeing no one uh, interested in pulling one off for discussion, I will then move both of those. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. Those motions carry. Then we'll move on to our previous item six. I think I called it 2.5 now, which is just a quick update. Um, not necessarily good news, but an update about our Senior Skyway uh, Center. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Gordon. My name is Patty Bowler and I'm with the Health Department. And I wanted to just give a quick update on the center. So last time we were here talking about the center, uh, we had a letter of intent from Ecumen to take over the operation of the center. And um, unfortunately, I, I'm here to report that Ecumen has chosen not to take over the center and um, that we have probably enough funding to keep the Skyway Senior <coughs> Center open through the end of March. Um, just a little background on the center. It started in 2001 and it's always been um, funded through external sources and we're very grateful to those previous sponsors that have helped to keep um, the Skyway Senior <coughs> Center open and vibrant. Um, it serves about 74 seniors per day, and in 2015, we had over 18,000 visits by seniors um, during that year. <coughs> and we have a number of volunteers who also spend many hours at the center um, providing basic support and hosting. Um, so I just wanted to give you that update. Um, and uh, lastly, I, I wanted to thank a couple of folks, um, Sarah Goodnell, who's been our uh, senior center coordinator, and she's just done an outstanding job with the center. She's the only full-time person, and um, with, with the volume that the center serves and the number of activities, we've got like three per day, um, Sarah does a, a wonderful job um, keeping all the balls in the air. And then also the Friends of the Skyway Senior Center they're a small fundraising group, and we've been relying on their funding to keep the doors open now and, you know, for the last probably 14 months. So we're very thankful to the friends as well. They've, they've provided a great amount of support. Uh, so that's my update, and I wonder if there's any questions or comments. I don't see any questions. I understand that Ecumen felt they didn't have the resources to take this on right now and that there might be an opportunity if somebody were to step forward in the next um, few weeks um, that they could take that on. Um, it sounded like Ecumen might be looking at opening a senior center of their own somewhere in the future, at least looked like that in a newspaper article. But um, It's too bad. Um, I think this is a real loss for the community. Thank you. Um, sorry, it wasn't better news. So I think we just have to receive and file that report. All those in favor of receiving and filing, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we can move on to item number three. And this is a uh, 
a report on our uh, from our advisory committees and Ms. Press will start us off. This is on the uh, recycled waste tire mulch. Thank you much, Chairman. My name is Gail Prest. I'm the Sustainability Director with the City Coordinator Sustainability Office, and I'm pleased to be here. I also staff the Community Environmental Advisory Committee, um, and I'd like to um, actually give a shout out to Margaret Schuster with our Health Department, who staffs the Public Health Advisory Committee. You directed both of these committees to do some work, and they're back here to report. Um, and finally, would any SEAC or PHAC member please stand and be recognized? Um, they've all been really active. Um, a lot of them weren't able to be here, but um, they've been following this closely and working hard on this over the months. And with that, we'll turn it over to Karen and Jenna. Good afternoon, Welcome. Chair Gordon and committee, committee members. Uh, my name is Karen Soderberg. I live at 286 Washburn Avenue North. I uh, actually formerly represented Ward 7 on the Public Health Advisory Committee, but have uh, retired from that position. Um, so to recap, uh, last June we were directed uh, the two committees, Public Health Advisory Committee and CEAC, to make recommendations regarding the use of recycled tires as ground cover in Minneapolis. And so we are reporting back on that. Um, what we did is we formed a subcommittee, including members of both of our advisory committees, uh, and we also got some uh, special uh, representation from MPRB uh, and from Minneapolis Public Schools to help understand the, uh, the breadth of it, uh, uh, installations in the city. Um, we had several meetings on this. Uh, we heard from Play It Safe Minnesota, which is advocating to uh, abolish the use of the rubber tire, uh, recycled tire mulch. Uh, we heard from both uh, the schools and the park board in September where they gave us a recap of their installations and their why they've installed and their needs for maintenance and all of this is outlined as uh, appendices in your report. Uh, in October we heard from a panel of experts, um, two from the University of Minnesota, uh, Dr. Toscano and Dr. Simsic. Uh, Dr. Simsic also is a resident in the Stillwater. Um, public school area and he spoke uh, not just professionally but personally about their uh, experience in installing um, the uh, artificial turf in that community. And then we also heard from Michael Peterson, a senior toxicologist with a company called Gradient. So uh, based on what they have told us and some additional research that we did, we um, each of the committees independently approved draft, draft recommendations. Uh, by voice vote. Our P Public Health Advisory Committee had one uh, opposition and SEAC had a uh, abstention. So a little bit more background. We've got in the schools uh, about 71 percent of the um, the playgrounds have rubber mulch. Uh, these were installed because it was promoted by the EPA and the Consumer Product Safety Commissions for its safety and durability compared to the alternatives. They are currently on hold with any more conversions of the uh, playgrounds to rubber mulch, but they do need to perform routine maintenance on the installations that they have. Uh, the schools have one synthetic turf with the uh, crumb rubber infill, and that's at Washburn High School. And they don't have any plans right now to install more artificial turf fields. Minneapolis Park and Rec Board, they do not use recycled mulch or synthetic turf on their playgrounds. Um, they have artificial turf with the crumb rubber infill used in eight of the athletic fields. Um, these offer the advantage of withstanding the wear and tear of a, a lengthy season and high use. Um, and um, they are in the process, since they've had a number of these installed for a while, of uh, allocating rehab funds to, uh, for improvements on those older fields. Uh, additionally, the Neighborhood Park Plan 2020 has some funds that include artificial fields, including Curry Park, which is fairly far along in its uh, development process and has um, a lot of community engagement in that project. I'll just interrupt a little bit here because I think Councilmember Fry has a question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and I apologize if you were about to get to this in a second. Um, what is, uh, do you also have figures for the number of tracks that are outfit, outfitted with some form of crumb rubber? 
Uh, thank you, Chair Gordon. Commissioner Fry, we do not have information on that. Uh, we, one of our recommendations is to gather more information on the use. We're focusing on the mulch and the crumb rubber and not the solid mat rubber, uh, but that could potentially be included. Thank you. Uh, at this point, I'm going to hand this over to Jenna to handle the uh, the work that's being done study-wise. Right. Good afternoon, Chair Gordon and committee members. I'm Jenna Grills. I am the Legislative Program Coordinator at Clean Water Action, and I represent that group on SEAC. Um, as she mentioned, there are a couple studies being conducted currently because of the lack of scientific consensus on whether this is safe for children or whether it po uh, potentially causes uh, health effects. So um, there is a federal study being done by the EPA the Consumer Product Safety Commission, and also the Centers for Disease Control. And um, they are doing a bunch of different things, um, including kind of a compilation of what is out there for existing studies and also doing some biological studies as well as um, characterizing some of those exposure routes, whether it be breathing in some of those VOCs, um, ingesting it or from dermal absorption. The other study being done is being conducted by California. They have invested quite a bit of money to take the study a little bit further, which includes um, doing some biomonitoring, actual health, um, more in-depth health studies. So um, obviously some of our subcommittee key findings, uh, everyone wants to ensure that our children are safe and um, being well taken care of. One of the issues we did um, consider with these recommendations is the aspect of jurisdiction. Obviously the city does not operate the public parks or the public schools, but they do um, obviously have leverage and influence. Um, so in addition to that, obviously as we mentioned, the largest concern is the um, presence of toxic chemicals in this material. Um, there have been studies that show there are around a little under 100, and many of those, probably over half, have no um, adequate studies for human health effects. So that's one of the, the biggest concerns that have been noted during our, during our meetings. Um, there are some other competing concerns. I don't know if I would have used that language, but increasing playtime, obviously some of these materials are a little bit more durable. Um, when it comes to the safety and injury management, there are alternatives that do provide that same fall attenuation, that same protection. Um, and then there's also the cost aspect of installation and ongoing maintenance. Um, both are costly. Uh, the um, tire mulch actually is <coughs> very expensive to do remediation on, which is why when we get to our recommendations in a second, um, we will uh, go into why we did suggest the moratorium because any further installation should these studies come back saying this is not great for children's health, then it's gonna cost a lot of money to do that remediation. Um, and then the aspect of durability, which was also mentioned. Um, as far as other um, municipal reaction in Minnesota, the Minnesota Department of Health has provided a fact sheet on just different ways to reduce exposure and they um, you know, do suggest waiting to, for these results to come back. Um, as far as other actions, uh, you know, there, this issue has been brought in front of other cities, other school boards. Um, the Duluth School Board did vote unanimously to take out their existing playgrounds with the tire mulch. Um, Edina did a vote to approve plans for synthetic turf fields that had been in the works um, a while before the issue kind of came forward and before the parents um, came forward to, to kind of uh, oppose it. Um, and then there are some, like I said, there are some other cities, Hopkins, Minnetonka, and Wayzata, 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 sorry. Um, but yeah, with that being said, uh, there are school districts all across the state that are utilizing this material. And I have further information on that if anyone's interested. So with that said, our recommendations are 
to um, do a moratorium on city finance projects outside of the neighborhood park plan, financing regarding the use of crumb rubber and tire mulch until December of 2019. So this would be for any new construction of playgrounds or athletic fields. Um, it's also our other recommendation that the city convene its partners and stakeholders in planning thoughtful and proactive approaches and kind of including some alternatives in their contingency plans moving forward. And um, we'll stand for any questions. Thank you very much. I don't see any questions right now um, from committee members, but I have a question about um, I noticed that most of the information wasn't about um, possible water contamination, and I'm wondering if you, um, at, um, in your position with Clean Water Action, or also in the conversations of the advisory committees, um, heard any concerns raised about um, what this does to water quality and stormwater runoff in our lakes and rivers. Of course, there are certain, certainly environmental concerns when it comes to soil contamination and water quality, and different ways that some of the heavy metals in this material can affect aquatic life. Um, when it comes to what we kind of focused on in our subcommittee, it did tend to lean more towards the children, children's health aspect, which is probably why you don't see as much of the environmental impacts in this presentation. Focusing on children's health is, is fine with me too. I just wanted to bring up that issue. Um, I don't see any other uh, questions. Oh, I think that Council Member Fry has a question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so the the health effects that that's presently being studied. Do we have any idea when that uh, information will ultimately get back to us? Yes, um, the California study is supposed to be completed in twenty nine mid twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen. Okay. Um, does the study that's moving forward uh, delineate between? crumb rubber on the playgrounds and say tires on the road um, in other words I, I obviously there's not a health impact to tires on the road but I guess I'm more asking from an environmental perspective um, um, I, I, I can imagine that uh, tires on the road when combined with water and then runoff takes place it goes into the river it would have probably a similar impact as with the crumb rubber but perhaps not as great I, do you have any information on that actually the it's the effect of the grinding of the tire and the mulch breaking it down is okay. further having having those effects. That um, makes sense. When it, especially when it comes to the health effects, like the off gassing, it's you know when it heats up or um, having it ground like that is. And with the roads, there are obviously implications of runoff. But um, kind of like to your question that you asked about the the tracks, there's even less data on effects for health and environment on unitary surfacing because it is encased in that kind of epoxy, if you will. Um, so I can't speak to that as much as I can the, yeah. the ground material. With the tracks, this is more of a personal paranoia <laughs> at this point because I spent, the, I spent pretty much years nine through 27 on a track and although there is an epoxy surfacing, You'd right. come home and it was in your hair, it was all over your skin, it right. was pretty much everywhere. And so, I mean, if anybody's going to be suffering from it, it's probably me. The, um, the California study is um, considering unitary surfacing in their study. So hopefully we will have a little bit more data on that. Well, I just want to really extend my uh, gratitude. Uh, I was very impressed with the two committees and the, uh, just understanding the work you've done. And I know we had an opportunity to meet also. <laughs> and talk about it, um, listening to all the points of view and all the time and effort that you put into this. And it wasn't the first time, at least I think you were, um, one of you was here back when we looked at it the first time in 2008. And so um, we've asked you to help us with this twice and I really um, just want to express my sincere appreciation and uh, you can extend that back to the advisory groups. This was a great, uh, great amount of work and um, great information for us to get back and I really appreciate it. So thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome. Now I um, also have a resolution that I'd like to bring forward. Um, looking at the, um, all the recommendations, I tried to incorporate many of those uh, in here. I also had the opportunity to discuss this with um, our commissioners, a school board member, um, and, and also talk to 
uh, some of the uh, um, advocates, including people from Play It Safe um, Minnesota, who presented to us originally um, when we put this back out there. I also talked to the city attorney's office. I talked about a moratorium and what that would that would mean, and did we have that kind of authority? Um, I think the recommendation was to do a moratorium on funding, uh, the, um, and the resolution um, that that I crafted talks about prohibiting funding. That doesn't mean if we're prohibiting funding for it now, we couldn't uh, allow it sometime in the future. Uh, that's a little more clear than there's not an automatic end date. Also, according to um, uh, if we were going to uh, do some kind of large scale moratorium on other property owners beyond funding, um, we don't really have the authority to do that. So I'm, um, in addition to this resolution, I'm looking at uh, ordinance amendments that would prohibit its use um, in the city and other areas. Of course, an ordinance process takes a lot longer and we'd have a public hearing. I think there's places for it in the zoning code and also in the housing code. But the resolution that you should have before you, um, I, I don't think I'll read the entire resolution, but I would like to go over um, some of the uh, resolved clauses. I encourage everybody, though, to read it. I think it lays out really nicely some of the main reasons um, why we should be concerned about this, um, reasons that we've heard about from our committees and elsewhere, having to do with the possible ingestion of these materials by our children who are playing on them, having to do with the heat effect that gets created on these fields and how um, hot they can get, and also um, uh, concerns about um, the substances um, leaching into our soil and into our um, aquatic systems. Um, the proposal in the resolution outlines a few key items. Um, the first is that we would prohibit the use of city funds in the form of grants or direct appropriations to city or community-led projects for the installation or replacement of any facilities or amenities using waste tires, including the use of waste tire crumb rubber and waste tire mulch. So this doesn't relate to all kinds of synthetic turf and it doesn't relate to other kinds of crumb rubber that can be used as an alternate. And I know that in Curry Field they do use ground up uh, tennis shoes. We just asked the group to look at waste tires and so that's the focus of the resolution. Um, and also when I talk about the replacement of any facilities, that means if they have a, a, a playground that's using it now and they're gonna take it out and put something back in, it's just replacement of it with waste tires again they can certainly replace it with some other uh, material. Um, also, I'm uh, moving that we um, encourage our other partners, including the Minneapolis Public School Board and the Park and Recreation Board and the University of Minnesota and other colleges, university schools, and child development facilities to discontinue the use of waste tire materials as ground cover and infill in Minneapolis and develop plans and budgets for changing or removing the waste tire rubber mulch and crumb that is now in use and uh, go on to say that we support our, our government agencies and partners in operating in the city in their efforts to address community concerns related to waste tire materials. I'm also um, moving forward some um, directions to the health department. Uh, I'm asking the health department to consider and make recommendations about conducting the inventory. This was one of the recommendations from the advisory groups because we really don't know what's, um, what's there now. And so that um, it, it, I think it's possible um, had some discussions with staff and this sounded like something maybe a, a summer intern could even help conduct as an inventory of all fields and playgrounds in the city that use waste tires. So we can look at the schools and the churches, the private daycares and those facilities and see just how prevalent it is out there. Second thing I'm asking the health department to do um, is to make recommendations regarding precautions people can take um, when they're using or playing on these fields and playgrounds, considering water contamination, exposure to toxins and exposure to heat. Um, those are all things that I heard quite a bit about and I know that the um, state has developed some safety standards and this is also a recommendation that's come up from um, the advisory group is to look at how we can improve public awareness. Um, and so that's the, uh, the nuts and bolts of the resolution. Um, I'll move that forward and open it up for discussion and questions. Councilmember Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I'll note just for committee members that I have a staff direction after this that I want to bring forward. Uh, it's uh, the chair and I had talked about, uh, which would have finance staff look to see if there's any ways that we could find funding to help speed up, accelerate, and uh, tackle this effort. Uh, I really thank Chair Gordon for bringing this resolution forward. I thank all the advocates, the Public Health Advisory Committee, our staff uh, for tackling this issue. I think that. Uh, 
Um, it's so interesting when we look back in time at a generation ago and we see uh, public health concerns or environmental concerns back then that seem so clear and so obvious to us now that, my goodness, how could they do this? How could they have that practice? How could they be so naive? But at those times as well, we saw uh, that there was information still out, still pending, that all the facts weren't in. Uh, but in this case, we know here's a waste product that is toxic, and we are having our children, our toddlers, our youth playing in it exposed to it, uh, going through it, breathing it in close to it. And uh, it's just so concerning, I think, from a public health standpoint around uh, all the different points of exposure and ways that our youth are in contact with this stuff. And uh, even just thinking about endocrine disruptors and how low level uh, toxicity can occur and affect the uh, systemic uh, uh, makeup of a person and uh, disrupt hormones and cause all sorts of health implications. It's uh, past time that we get this stuff out of our playgrounds. So I'm happy that Council uh, uh, Chair Gordon has brought this forward and I'm glad to support it and just want to thank everyone for their work. I appreciate it. I've also looked at the staff direction and supportive of that. I, I suppose maybe we better take it up though after we pass the resolution and, and discuss it then. So, any other, uh, oh I see some comments, Council Member Bender. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Brief, just briefly also wanted to add my thanks for bringing this forward and to the folks that have uh, really led this in the community. I had the chance to meet with some constituents about this last week. And, um, you know, I'm a mom who sends my kids to public school here in the city. Um, you know, and I uh, feel strongly that our children, our parents should feel safe sending their children to school facilities and parks in our city. Um, there are too many questions, I agree, about these materials. I also have the experience of having um, been diagnosed with cancer as a, as a young adult and uh, don't wish that on anyone and feel also very strongly based on my personal experience that, you know, when there are carcinogens and materials, it's um, important to err on the side of caution, especially again, when our children and, and babies are playing in this material. Um, so I, I think also, um, I did have the chance to get updated from them on their conversations with the school board. And I know that the schools have been investing and in, in putting these in a lot of schools and this is a big deal to talk about taking it out and replacing it back with something else but I um, it sounds like from your conversations and theirs that our school board members have been really open to that discussion and I just wanted to note that because I think that's really great to hear um, because it's a big deal and so um, anyway thanks for bringing this forward. Councilmember Fry. Thank you Mr. Chair. So um, I have not had a chance to, to talk with the uh, proponents of this initiative uh, before today, and I do plan on speaking with them between now and the full council meeting. Uh, I, while I, I do plan on supporting this uh, ordinance or this uh, resolution today, um, I did just want to express my concerns transparently so that they can then be addressed between now and the full council meeting. Um, uh, I am 150% in favor of eliminating this substance moving forward so that we're not continuously um, in making the same investments that we have in the past. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that uh, these rubber particulate matter and substance is not healthy. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that ingesting it or playing in it or breathing in the fumes, especially when it's hot, is uh, does not contribute to, to overall health. And I'm quite certain that it's also um, a negative. Um, so. The, the concerns are, in, are monetary. Um, it's, the, it's about, I, I understand it's about $3.3 .3 million uh, for uh, a reinvestment to change these playgrounds. I think the presenter said it was about $1 million for the Washburn field, and then we don't yet have statistics for the number of tracks that are using the same form of uh, rubber matter. Um, and the, the concern, while I share the, con the concern for health, um, is another concern, which is that our schools are presently about $28 million in deficit. Uh, and how do we weigh these priorities uh, at this time? And so that, that's why what I just kind of want to talk to the proponents about. Like I said, I, I will be voting for this today. Uh, but I do want to really do dig in on some of the, the the very specific facts. And so, um, but as part of this resolution, I just wanted to ask Mr. Chair, um, and I know I 
did discuss this with uh, Mr. Garwood prior to the meeting, but it's, it says uh, in that, so now therefore it be resolved by the city of, uh, by the council in the city of Minneapolis that the city of Minneapolis prohibits the use of city funds in the form of grants or direct appropriations to city or community led projects for the installation or replacement of any facilities. Um, so I agree that we should not be installing any new facilities containing this rubber matter. Um, and I agree that we sh also should not be replacing um, any existing uh, playgrounds or fields uh, with uh, new rubber matter if there's a renovation that takes place. The, and so the, the question is just about maintenance. Um, so in this resolution, we're, I, I believe that we're allowing the maintenance of existing facilities to continue. Um, yeah, I think that is the intention. Um, when I actually shared this language with one of the park commissioners, um, she helped craft the term um, um, installation or replacement. So this would mean that the, um, um, again though, this is the use of city funds. So right now when the school district does their maintenance and in replenishing lost uh, mulch, they don't use any of their city fund, uh, our city funds, they use their funding to do it. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't relate to that. But this is the intention is when you're going to replace um, a playground, when you're doing your whole renovation, um, then you can't use city funds to do that replacement.